Welcome to Fun Pilot Podcast, where we are unpacking opinions and changing destinations. I am your host, Shirley Altador, where each week we will chat about how to rise strong out of all types of obstacles that come with relationships. Through personal life experiences and discussions ranging from infidelity, trust, forgiveness, sex, heartbreak, self-love, and so much more. I am passionate and obsessed to provide guidance to every woman to create a better life. Let's dive in, pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. With me, your virtual girlfriend. Welcome back to Fun Pale. Today we have another guest with us today, and this guest has graced us with her presence in season three with Sex in a Relationship. Holly, welcome back to the show. How are you today? I am wonderful. Thank you so much for having me back. You know, I am a huge fan of yours. Ah, You're just the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And they are going to love listening to your story because they love listening to Sex in a Relationship with you. Oh, thank you. So yeah, today we're talking about fidelity and infidelity in marriage. Um, I will do a really quick short version of I had a starter marriage. And I call it that because it was <laughs> it was practice. I was with the man from the time I was 23 to 28. We lived together after one month of knowing each other. And I married him because I fit in his pants. So these are all things I don't really recommend using as qualifiers for a relationship. The things I wrote about him in my journal after our first date that worried me are the exact reasons I left him. Okay. He was emotionally and mentally abusive. Okay. And um, he was seven years older. He was creative. He was all these things I thought that I wasn't in the, I was in film and television then. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I really didn't have the self-confidence or I didn't own any self-worth in a way that was good for me. And so I was in this relationship. Okay. Okay. Um, there are so many things that were wrong with it. Like, um, like towards the end, I lost my home to an earthquake during this relationship and he wasn't working and I was paying our rent and working and dealing with the my home that was lost. Like everything was on my plate and I planned a, a wedding. Like I was always busy dealing with life and I never paid attention to the relationship, which I think is a huge learning point for people. What right. Was he like doing? sometimes, Oh, he was telling me how he had to be creative and I was paying for everything so he could write a script. I see. And you know how at 23, 24, 25, whatever, at that age, you would think like, oh, yeah, I'm an adult. I can make really, really good decisions. Mm -hmm. And I hear this. And when you say emotional abuse, as simple as that may be, in your mind, you're thinking, I'm supporting my spouse. Yeah. But you don't see these red flags. Mm -mm. No, and I forget what the journal said. I think he, I didn't like how he spoke to me or that I saw that he was not motivated. And I'm exceedingly motivated. And by, and then I was super a plus personality. I, I, I I'm like an a minus now, like I'm, I'm very <laughs> focused, but I'm not as neurotic just with age and experience and like learning. So, um, that marriage ended and I like a favorite quote of a friend of mine. He said, there's nothing better than a 28 year old woman getting divorced. Cause all she wants to do is make up for all the sex that didn't happen in the relationship. And mm -hmm. like really none happened. And um, I uh, was producing something and I had the ability to call someone who used to just short circuit me from head to toe. We had worked together in the past. And when he walked into the room, my whole body heated up. I mean, like chemical reaction, like not even a little. I mean, like full fantasy mode in my brain. I couldn't speak. And like, obviously, I like to talk. You and I talk very easily. Mm -hmm. um, and I would be like, the all of a sudden you were lost in words, lost in everything because my body was on fire. Was like, it the I attraction, was... like physical? Uh, every, every, everything. 
everything. <laughs> and I, I don't know why, like, you know, he's, he was, is, I don't, you know, I don't stalk him. So I don't know what he's like now. And it's been 30, whatever years. So mm -hmm. he was English. He had the English accent and he kind of looked like Sting from the police. So he had piercing blue eyes. I like, I like dark. I like my type is especially then was darker skin, dark eyes, dark. Like I just like you all can't see me. I don't think, but I'm like shaking my shoulders. So just like, I just like that. I like like eyes that I can just stare into forever that are. When you say darker that. skin, darker complexion or tan yeah. white man. Um, I, I think more like olive skin, tan Mediterranean kind of look. Uh, okay. So you don't um, want like the pale look. <laughs> I don't, yeah, no, it's no, sun. A, no sun. No, it's now married to that. But, um, so we love the, your husband. We're not making we, no, fun he of does. you. You know, my husband now is six, five, you know, he used to have long, like light blonde hair, piercing blue eyes, like eyes that I could never look into. Cause this is what I say about him now. When you met him, what'd you think? Pretty blue eyes. Like, you oh. know, they're just so... There's a difference looking in blue eyes and looking in darker mm -hmm. eyes. I don't know. Dark there eyes, is. you can swim around in them things. Like those blue things, you're just like, <gasps> like, that's they how I, I respond. You. Yeah. So um, anyway, I called this person into work. Um, and so that all happened. Mm -hmm. I couldn't speak around him. And everyone, everyone in my office would make fun of me because of that. They're like, what the hell is wrong with you? I was like, oh, so I would just call him in randomly just to get a look and then he would leave. Um, and then you fast forward four years and I am now getting divorced and I call him to work for me. Okay. And he's like, let's have lunch. And I was like, sure. And he showed up and it's a, the same hole. I can't speak. I don't know what's wrong with me. You're still that reaction. And we went out to lunch and I, I just was just, I could, like, it was just, it's just one of those things. And then he had a very fancy car and he's like, let's go for a drive. And I uh -huh. was like, no, okay, let's okay. not let this lunch end. Right. Mm. So we drove and I'm sure by the way, he did this with a bajillion people and I didn't care. Right. Like, you know, it was just like, I didn't care. Went for a drive and as we were driving back, he was telling me that he had had a crush on me the whole time too. And then I find out he was married and I was like, um, when you're in the car. Yeah. During lunch, during before lunch, we even got okay. in the car. I was like, so now that there's like that line, I was like, all right, whatever. I was like, how could you flirt with me? You got, he had gotten married the same time I did. And I had no idea. Oh, okay. And, uh, I was like, okay, that's just but, kind of but weird. But in his, uh, he, I mean, there was not much interaction with you guys where I guess that conversation needed to come up or did he not wear a ring? if you worked with someone for nine months, you would know. Oh, you were working with him in close contact. Yeah. Oh, and you never realized for nine months that this man was married. Not No, one. that he was getting married. Getting so married. when we first okay. met, right, we were both, I was engaged and he was engaged and I didn't know. And he would uh -huh. like flirt with me, like, right. He'd come in short circuit and leave and short circuit. Mm -hmm. Like it was like a game. It was like help, you know, working in film production, you're working 12 to 14 hour days. They're long ass days. If you're not flirting with someone, it is a miserable day. It doesn't have okay. to be a serious flirt. Like I know there are so mean. many lines. There are many lines in film production. And, and I have to say that the cast isn't the only ones fooling around a lot of time. Right. You know, it's like. What gets you through the day? Someone makes you feel good about yourself. You're going to like go there like and enjoy that. Right. Exactly. There's, but I think there are degrees of flirtation and there's always a line. Like, you know, that line, you might go near it. You might dance on it. But like, I was never one to like cross that line. Gotcha. Okay. So then you fast forward. Um, now you're at lunch and at you lunch. find out I, he's I married. Flabbergasted flabber of the gas did and he was still flirting with me so i was like well this is i'm like whatever okay you're married okay. whatever and i was like i can't believe you didn't tell me he's like but why would you i was enjoying flirting with you like that was his response interesting okay mm -hmm. all right so let me see so, where this is going mm, so we go for a drive and then as we're driving he's bringing me back to my office he's like i'm gonna pull over and kiss you now i was like he said -uh. that to you oh yeah 
And I was like, no, you're not. Like, don't be an asshole. And he's like, no, no, I am. I'm like, no, you're not. And no, he did. Okay. And we were in that car kissing for like 40 minutes. Oh, my. Okay. So and he's like, oh, and I was like, I'm in charge. Like, I'm the boss. I have to go back to work. What are you doing? I was like, insanely on, like, it was crazy. So, and I couldn't believe what just happened. Like, I was... I was just dumbfounded. Now, I also really have to say, I was obviously not in the best place, like mm -hmm. emotionally, spiritually, every other which way. I was very low self-esteem. I was trying to find things that made me feel better. Mm -hmm. And he definitely made me feel better, right? Yeah. So that was where I was at. And I walked into the office and like in three seconds, he called me. And then I was like, I cannot take your call. And he just kept calling. And it was like the beginning of cell phone. So he was calling the heart landline. Okay. Okay. I was like, dude, no. -uh. So I was like, I don't, he's like, I don't think I should work with you. I'm like, I don't think you should either. <laughs> no. He's like, I, he's like, did you really call me to work for you? Or did you look, need an excuse to call me? I was like, mm, probably the second, honestly. Right. A little bit of both but probably the second more than the first. Okay. Um, so then what happened was like that door between the us was open. After that case. And, uh, oh. Yeah. And, um, and so we met for a drink a few nights later and, you know, and had another like very, whatever session making out right just like a lot of that just making right? out. so no just making penetration out. just Not making yet, no. out okay so just yeah. heavy kissing and touching uh just like all the romance and attention and just the buildup of desire mm -hmm. and so he would say I'll never forget this he would he called me delicious and he would whisper it Thank you. You just made the same face. He would wit now, like really in hindsight, I know he definitely does this with everybody, but oh man, it worked, right? So, so you know would... I have a question for you. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you went out a second time oh, yeah. knowing he's not available. Mm -hmm. Why? Is it because you were at the lowest in your life, you feel? And at that point, you're decision making yep. was really truly crowded i needed to feel anything that wasn't negative and you know you are not the first person i've spoken to where you've in the story is not the same but the underlying reason behind it now i totally understand where in the beginning when it starts off the mistress the side chick the other woman, whatever name you want to give her. It's really, truly never intentional towards the other person. Mm -mm. Literally, you are not even thinking about the other person. And that is the factual truth. That's that what is, I'm hearing. Yeah. Everyone. percent I think, well, I wasn't in a relationship that I was betraying anyone in. I was in a place of feeling broken and less than. And for five years, I was told on a daily basis, everything that was wrong with me. Mm -hmm. I'll love you if you don't gain weight. You didn't do this good enough. That's not good enough. This isn't good enough. You would look prettier if. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, this man was like, you're delicious and you're beautiful and you're this and I desire you. And, and so many other things. And, and a, it's a really messed up side note I'm going to give you. It wasn't long before I saw him that I had come to terms with being raped when I was 15. And that's mm -hmm. how I lost my virginity. So my sexuality was very entangled in that power and taking control and not having control and whatever. And so when I told my starter husband that I was raped when I was 15, the next day he bought, I came home and he bought me a box and it was a gift of trashy lingerie. Like seriously, trashy like and there's no problem with that it can be fun to play with that i'm not i don't if anyone else is into it i'm not putting that down but as a response to someone saying i was sexually assaulted it's fucked up it is wrong it crosses the line mm -hmm. it devalued me it dehumanized me it did everything and i i saw this and i kept it in the box and i was that's when i knew it was done 
My, gotcha. I was like, that was even one too far for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so anyway, so now I'm with this person and I'm getting all this attention and it's like the beginning stuff, right? It's not mm -hmm. like going hog wild, but it did. So, yeah. um, we met a few times and we were just teasing each other, like Got insanely it. teasing because th there's still this fraction of my brain that's saying, you don't mess around with a married man, right? You just, you don't. And I'm like, kissed him, is that so bad? I don't, I don't mm -hmm. know, it is, but. The good I'm versus not evil conversation we all have in our minds. Right. Or the, the, good, the, good, the good, good versus bad. I'm sorry. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. So where it turned the corner <laughs> was, um, I, I can't remember the timeline, but it was like a week, a week into it, two weeks. Okay. His wife went out of town. Mm -hmm. And so he said, I'm coming over. It was like, and I was like, no, you're not. He's like, open the garage door. I'm coming over. He was outside. No, he wasn't that far. I, I lived really far away from him. I lived like over an hour away from where he, he was. He was right? coming to get that. Mm -hmm. mm, that delicious so, piece of fruit. Exactly, exactly. So you know what I did? I wore that lingerie that my ex. Oh my gosh, girl. I did. No. Oh yeah, I did. I did. Wouldn't you? Come on, that's a really the good. The emotional abuse still continued from a distance, even after the divorce. No, it was, I took that power. I was like, you think you were oh, going to hurt me by how giving you me associate. that? associate, I see. Okay, okay. So I put that on and I was like, I'm going to put it on, I'm going to put someone else in it. So F you. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's oh exactly gosh. what I did. So he came over and we were on the kitchen table, on the counter, on the living room, on the steps, upstairs, downstairs, left, right. I mean, there was no place that we weren't together, intimate, wildly happy. Okay. Well, I was like, oh my God, this is some. Um, so you officially tied the knot as mistress. Well, yeah. Hmm. So how long did this last, Holly? Not that long because I had guilt. I had, I didn't really have guilt over that because it was hot and awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, um, I mean, it was, I was living out of fantasy. Mm -hmm. So I was working on another show and again, cell phones weren't that popular then. So he, it was flip phones, right? This is like the nineties. And so he would call from his cell phone to my work number and then talk dirty to me. And I'd be like, dude, I gotta go. I gotta oh. work. And I'd hang up. And then he one time called like his excuse to visit me on set. So we knew a lot of the same people, right? Okay. Um, when he's like, I'm just dropping off a coffee because mm. he wouldn't no, no. And then we, I had a door, I closed the door and we like make out. We would just, whatever. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any opportunity Any he took advantage of. Oh, for sure. And one time he hung up on me and I got really mad and I was mumbling about how pissed off I was. And he was there in my door. <laughs> at work and I, he's like oh really and then like you know we went somewhere else and did more I mean it was it was and you know the people it, on set knew because the people around didn't. you you sure a hundred you guys kept it really mm -hmm. truly like we ain't yeah doing okay yeah so what made because you... I think someone would have said something because no one's like you know there would be you a think thing. they would have said something you're the boss not that not on that on that set no the boss was so this is why we end up not whatever okay i might be jumbling like time so no i'm not yeah so it comes to a point where i'm on my set where i'm the boss right I, so i okay. you know like production you can have a gig that lasts a month a couple of months like it all depends so this see. the okay. next thing so the job i had asked him to do was a pretty quick one it wasn't very long gotcha Gotcha. And what happened is I unknowingly had hired his best friend, not knowing that they were best friends and someone and two other people who knew him on um, the show that he did not take. Mm -hmm. And it was a coincidence. And um, I was on set and I was dealing with like something that wasn't working out right. Like um, our first day of filming, our location manager showed up late. The 
truck was stuck in reverse and a huge piece of equipment broke. It was like a, a nightmare of a day and I'm getting through it and I'm walking around and, and it was like the nineties and I was wearing a pair of overalls and I had a big thing of cash in my walkie talkie. Cause that's how you talk on set all okay. clipped onto the front. And I'm standing to the side. I was probably smoking a cigarette and I heard someone say, and someone so won't be skiing this, this, I'm not going to use their names. Obviously. Don't use their so names. So and so and so and so won't be skiing because she's pregnant. And I found out his wife was pregnant. And that was when I was done. That's what broke it for you. Correct. I couldn't, I felt bad enough, but I couldn't do it to a kid. I couldn't do it to a woman holding his child. So I just is, couldn't. So it definitely is like, Truth be told, majority of, again, mistresses, side chicks, other women, initially, you really, truly aren't thinking about that other person. You yeah, just, you're being selfish. Yeah, you're just... Because you're broken in some way. Yeah, There's some and, wound. And, and would you agree that a large majority of women who are in this situation, there is some type of underlying issue and some layers that need to be peeled back and realize why are you putting yourself in this situation? Why do you, why are you good enough on? for less? Yeah. Okay. So that's okay. what I say. What, why do you only think you deserve a slice? Yes. Maybe you're busy and you don't want more. That could be a truth, but maybe it is your self-worth and your self-esteem. But, and maybe you only want the good stuff. Maybe you only want the fantasy part. Like there's so many different ways, I think, depending on the person and the time of life of why it's okay. Okay. So now we're going to I think some women do it to save a guy or they think they're saving him. I'll save you from a bad relationship. I'll show you what a good one with me is like. Well, true. That means they're broken in some way, shape yep. or form. Now there is a small percentage. And I feel like the group of women who fit into that percentage is sex workers, number one. Mm -hmm. Because they're doing it for the money. There's no yeah. majority of the time these sex workers don't get attached to right. their clients. Has it happened? Yes, there's always an extreme to the situation. And then as you say, I would love to talk to a woman who legitimately is not broken, who knew and makes a choice to still continue this as to why. Yeah, I've seen a lot of clients where I've had to help them unwind that. And some of them aren't ready and they just get really mad at me. And I'm like, it, it's always your choice. I have actually no judgment, mm -hmm. but I'm much more worried about your long-term happiness because exactly. you keep coming to me because you're unhappy. Mm -hmm. And when we actually bring up the truth of the unhappiness, you get defensive, but that's the wound that you have to feel and heal. Okay. So truth be told, you as a, can I call you counselor or coach? What yeah. Type? An intuitive healer. Yeah. Okay. Intuitive healer. There is always an underlying reason why they're just accepting a slice. Yes. Got it. You guys hear this? There is always an underlying reason why he or she is just accepting a slice. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. And that's deep. I mean, there's a bajillion reasons. Like I know all of my reasons why I do that. Like I always swore in my life, I would never be that girl. Actually was friends with a girl who was actively having an affair with a man and I couldn't be her friend because I needed to lie for her mm. and I can't do that. I don't like I agree lies. with you. I That's can't. too much. You put me in a place that I don't need to be in. Don't involve me. You do you, you do what you're doing. Uh -huh, don't exactly. involve me. You want me to listen to your problems? I'll listen. But the minute you involve in me, we're going to have to uh -uh, set some yeah. boundaries here, girl. <laughs> so I called him and ended it. And he is like, you don't have to because who you know, she doesn't. <sighs> Wow, this man just. I mean, okay, okay, but it gets better. It gets better. Oh my so. gosh! Okay, go ahead. I, and I was, I that twisted me. I think it probably helped me in my therapeutic process, and I worked harder in therapy to like, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So it was still a hundred percent true that there was chemistry that was quite overwhelming to my senses, and he was a very attentive lover. He was very much into making sure there was pleasure and everything was romance and sexy, like everything about him to me, especially then was like that. So I was like, I can't because you're having a kid and that is a line I can't cross. I can't hurt a child who's completely innocent about it. And he's like, I'm never leaving her. I love my wife, but there's things 
that I, that you know about me that she will never know. Okay. And I said, what is it I that think you that's know? bullshit. <laughs> said, I mean, like y'all not talking about the heavy stuff, finances and how everything needs to be split. Y'all having like real good conversations. Yeah. I said, whatever it is that you're hiding from her, wouldn't your marriage be better if you didn't? Yeah. Like, even as the other woman, I was like, no, that's not right. So it ended. It was very sad for me. It's a very, it's a sweet memory as, as maybe confusing as that could be because no, I would never want to be a mistress. And I am, it breaks my heart that that one, that I did that to another woman, right. Mm -hmm. That I hurt her by engaging in with her husband, I felt really good that I stopped the minute I knew, but I couldn't imagine that he was okay with it. And he just kept reiterating, you know, it's totally separate. I love her, but I let me know this is good. So it honestly took whatever I had left of my self-esteem to say stop because I was enjoying myself. It was, it was sexy. It was a little dangerous. It was really naughty. I mean, like, mm-hmm some things I don't want to share with people because they're mine, yeah. right? Like the, you some have parts right. of it. There's certain, yeah. I tell people, even though I'm an open book, people only know 1% of my life and I share with right. you what I want you to know. So right. it's not gossip. You could talk about it with your girlfriend, say whatever you need to say. If I'm sharing it with you, especially on air, then I want you to know what I right. don't want you to know. I'm not sharing. Right. So I share like stories also so that when my healing clients come in, they know that I've been through it Yep. and I got through the other side and I, it's really a point of They don't connection. need to know. People don't always need to right. know every nitty right. gritty detail and all the intricates and the ins right. and outs. You just tell so, them the basics. There are some fun memories I have of count- encounters before my husband. My husband and I together like 17 something years, right? Mm-hmm. So, and- for those who don't know, since we were married in LA for over seven years, we count those in dog years, mm-hmm. seven times. So we're married forever. Got it. Um, so there are like those sweet memories of my past that I just, you know, keep close because exactly. that was my experience. So anyway, I end the affair um, and then I see him a year later, two years later, and I, and I am near him and short-circuited head to toe it's an involuntary reaction like whatever the those pheromones are and then he just looks at you and he speaks with you with that freaking english accent and he just whispers delicious and i like you know <gasps> done <I'm> done <laughs> And I make sure there's a table between us because I know my will is weak. I know it is. So right? nothing like, happened in that count encounter, right? No. And I said, strong. how are you? Good. And you know what I knew? He told me, he's like, I was like, so who's your new girlfriend? He's like, so-and-so on my show. And I was like, are you the man to always have someone? He said, yes. So you have 15 minutes. Oh. So we're going to stay Go. on topic because I know you got that hour. So. This individual basically, really, truly, it seems like he needs to be in some type of open relationship, but Mm -hmm. he refuses to share that with his wife. Why? Because he knows his wife is probably not down with that. I don't know. He's three children. Now he has three children uh and um, he is super successful, but he's the type of person who needs attention at work, I would say. And here's the thing. This is in our relationship. I tell you one reason why I wanted you to come back and share your story, because we do have opposite viewpoints on this. And, you know, Mm -hmm. me and my uh, when my interviewees, my guests come on, sometimes we don't always agree. And that is okay. It is okay to agree to disagree. Of course, when Holly and I talk, you would never know that. But Holly (laughs) wouldn't accept infidelity at all. And she would not continue her relationship if someone cheated on her, where I've told her, Both my partner and I have betrayed each other. We've been victims, perpetrators, and we're still together. We've made it work. So even though we don't, we don't see eye to eye, I guess for that, but that's okay. Right. I think I, I love that you and your husband do. I think that's a beautiful thing of forgiveness and open communication and honesty and no victimness in that. 
mm-hmm. right? There is a love and respect that you have for me since lying is my button. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is a lie I cannot forgive. Gotcha. Gotcha. Because I, that negates how much have you lied to me about? How did you lie to me to be able to see them? Yes. How did you make me feel foolish? My thing is like, we can have conversations that I'm not happy in my marriage right now, or you're pissing me off, or I'm not really forgiving you right now. We can like long-term marriage, you're going to have like good years, bad years, months, whatever days. Mm -hmm. Um, But my husband and I, a long time ago, agreed that if either of us was tempted to cheat, Mm -hmm. that we does the other person deserved to know. Exactly. I am so unhappy right now that something else looks appealing and not just a fantasy. I think it's very normal Mm -hmm. to fantasize about other people, Mm -hmm. right? So, you know, either with pornography or whatever, like whatever a person needs to do that, like my husband and I've been talking, like, what do we need lately? Because we've been intimate with one person for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And for me, strangely enough, I want like, I want romance. I want the sweet stuff, right? Because Mm -hmm. COVID sex isn't so great because my kid's home all the time. You're sneaking that shit in, right? Like, (laughs) you know, like I just, I just want, and I had a very, I had many years of infertility issues. I ended up ultimately having to have a hysterectomy. So sex was painful for me for so long that I just want like the sweet stuff and he's in a different place. So how do you find that? Now those conversations are fucking awkward with us. You know, we're both really good communicators, but our egos, my, am I not enough stuff gets triggered. Part of why, um, cheating is a no go for me is when I, especially my, first of all, not, not my ego. My husband's handsome. If he walks into a room, he's six foot five, you notice him right? You notice him. And when I met him, he was very LA. So met him at a Super Bowl party, six foot five, dirty blonde, brownish kind of hair, insanely piercing eyes. He had a turquoise fucking necklace, flip flops, white t-shirt and jeans. I mean, like yummy, right? And not my type, right? I was like, I mean, I know you're good looking. This is literally what I thought when I saw him. And you're good looking, but I don't know if you're as good looking as you think. But he was working in the room that night. I saw him collecting numbers. He was just working the room. And when I met him at the end of the night, he was talking to someone to the right of me, but he was looking at me while he was talking to her. And she did the LA questions of like, who, what is your name? What do you drive? And mm-hmm. what do you do? Right. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I'm a porn star. And my answer was your teeth are too good to be a porn star. <laughs> and that is how we met. And then I told him, it, he's like, I'd really like to see you. I said, if you want to see me, you see me next week or in a month. And he said, what? And I said, yeah, I'm taking my ass to Brazil and then Aspen. See ya. Okay. I was visiting. I was single and I had money and I wanted to travel. So he was like, what the? And then he lost my number and he had to call the person who asked who invited him to the party to call the guy who had the party to call my friend who invited me to the party to get my number again. Oh my, oh my. So he did work, right? So that's how we started. So anyway, beautiful. We have our ups and downs in dating because I told him I wasn't in the meantime that I had been married before and then I was Mm -hmm. ready to commit and that I have mixed feelings about marriage in general. Like I just, I did, but I've, felt for me, if I ever wanted to have a family, I wanted to be married. Gotcha. But marriage was still kind of, I think it needs to be all defined by the couple yes. as opposed to just society. Right. Exactly. So, um, I also told him right then and there that if you cheat, it's done. Okay. Because he's party and L- girls in LA, if someone's taken, they want that shit more. You think it's so just the minute LA? he got a ring. It's- Everywhere. I think more so there. The minute really? he got a ring, so many chicks came back. I, I mm-hmm. used to get a haircut. I was like, you got a haircut and a blowjob. The girl who did his hair had <laughs> such a thing for him. So he's like, I'm going to go get a hair. And he always came home really super happy. So like whatever she did, it flattered. And, like, and he was super happy. I was like, I'm not taking that away from you. It's, that's like, that's not a little extra flirtation. service with the yeah, haircut. A little, a little flirtation, like whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't care. But for him, he got the ring and he even admitted that like more people were like oh, paying attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was something that he had to navigate. And then I told him, you cheat, we're done. Okay. 
Okay. Because if I didn't give him a hard line, mm -mm. no, no, there's no way that human person wouldn't like celebrities have a hard time being faithful. Cause if you had a hundred penises that you liked thrown at you a day, at some point you're going to take one. It's a free fucking penis. It's a free fucking penis. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone always talks about the pussy, but come on, let's talk about the other way. No. Or like whatever you're into, right? You, so it's there and available. It's for you to say, like, I think everyday normal people have the same thing, right? You might have a work wife and that might just be a relationship that helps you get through the day or mm -hmm. there might come a time where there's like a little more tension and you have to decide, you have to make the choice what works for you. For me, the lie that you have to tell as many times as you have to tell to get away with doing that with someone else mm -hmm. is entirely too much for me to forgive. Gotcha. And do you, is it because of the experience? Hypothetically speaking, obviously you can't comment because if you didn't go through this, do you think it would be different? No. Also, I think because my dad cheated on my mom. Okay. And that's how their relationship ended because he was so cruel to her during it. So here's the thing. If these are, these are my honest opinions. Okay. It, if you have, I'll call it a slip up. Mm -hmm. Like if you have a one night stand and you're married, mm -hmm. you keep that shit and that fucking guilt to yourself and you process it, but don't you dare put it on your family. Uh, okay. So that's another interesting fact. There's so many different angles when it comes know, to so infidelity. And we already know infidelity really, truly a large portion of the time does break up relationships because as humans, that is hard for us to deal with. One is the reason you're saying is how many times did you have to lie to me to mm -hmm. make this person fit into your life? Right. And, and it makes you doubt what's real. Exactly. So, and then why are you giving them the good stuff? I want the good stuff. And I think as women, we always think, because that was my thing too. So I remember I there was one big thing I used to always say. There was one underlying thing that always bothered me. So you're having sex with her the way you're having sex with me? And the response is, it's not the same. Now, even to this day, I cannot quite understand. I feel like there are always going to be whys that are never really truly going to be understand under, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're always going to be a why that can't be explained. Mm -hmm. I don't know what a man really truly means. It's different because in my mind, all I think is you're penetrating me. You're penetrating her. I know how you're holding me and feeling on me. So she's getting that same treatment. But a man will say, it's not the same. I will never understand what that means. I think there's a difference between sex. And making love. Remember, we said that. Yeah, that's there a huge is, difference. But in my mind, even to this day, even after all the healing and we are really good. Like, I feel like our relationship is even stronger now than it was before. Mm -hmm. But I still... Truly, when the man goes to sleep with, even though I know there is a difference, but I feel like she's touching you the way I touch you. But this is why I can't forgive it. <laughs> this is what you know? That's why I'm saying if you have a one night stand, right? Honestly, I think it's your guilt and you need to process that because you're, you're going to destroy. Let's say I'm imagining you have a partner, wife, husband, and children right? Mm -hmm. There's a family unit, there's a dynamic, there's so many things that go into maintaining that. And you are going to shit on it and destroy it for your selfishness because you couldn't keep whatever in your pants. Mm -hmm. No, that's your problem. I don't know if many people agree. I don't even, I think I have had this conversation with my husband. I, I just keep it the you cheat it, we're done thing because I yeah. think a little fear is good that way. But yeah. And that's okay. You have a right to that. There's no wrong. Right. Just because I stayed in my relationship, right. it doesn't make it a bad thing if someone's to leave. Just remember that, listeners. You have to do what's best for you. Just because Holly would not stay with her husband if he cheated, it doesn't make her a bad person. It doesn't mm -hmm. make her husband the shit of the earth. Someone else is going to love that man. Yeah. I think I really think it just is really where you're at. And I think the longevity of a marriage really is this, this ridiculous statement that two people don't want to divorce the same day. 
<laughs> it's exactly. like that, that is but true. that's because society puts a negative on absolutely everything you get a divorce you're a shit individual and you couldn't work out your relationship you or your marriage you failed. you failed you're a loser why yeah. are you telling me this okay maybe the compatibility is not there anymore maybe whatever happened in my marriage i just did not want to deal with anymore and that is not a bad thing no, now I Holly, oh. you are tight on time. So I know. Wait, wait. I had are... to do ten more minutes. I gotta, sure? I gotta bring this thing up. Oh, you yeah. sure? Okay. He hasn't paced right, yet. Dear. But okay, good, thing. good. So I've been watching a lot of K dramas. I am like, this has been really helping me through the last three months of the pandemic. I'm learning mm -hmm. new culture. I'm trying to learn a new language. This is, it's everything about it is fascinating to me. And there is a show. It is called Love Featuring Marriage and Divorce, and it's three couples, mm -hmm. three affairs, different times in their life, different ages, and how they're demonstrating the affairs is brilliant. And I, I want you to watch it, but one is a young couple where they're, they're not well suited. They have very different personalities. There's no kindness or warmth, right? There's that. There's there's that there's mm -hmm. expectations one person is very demanding and the other person always used to acquiesce and it finally gets to a point in the marriage where they don't want to anymore and they they want a little warmth they want a little cozy at home mm -hmm. the other one is a man who you think is the best husband on the planet because he's so attentive and kind and you come to find out he dances on that line an awful lot and has, and one, they reveal an entire affair, but there's another one where he's always so close, so close. Then there's a third man whose wife has done everything for him, earned the money, helped him become who and what he is, and then meets someone who he kind of admires. And she asks him to help her get over the man who devastated her. Mm. It's interesting. And I like when producers or directors or whoever, you know, comes up with these storylines, you know, the actually writers. the writers make this, make, put this in some type of film or movie or whatever mm -hmm. to let people know, like, this is real fucking life. This is what mm -hmm. the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. It's not always peaches and roses, like social media at times, normally, truly what you like, what it is. Yeah. You're going to send me that information, number one, for oh, myself. For sure. And so also I can put it on the website and they can, you know, find it however they need to, yeah. to watch this. It's on Netflix right now. It is. I, my mother was visiting my recently. Is it subtitles? And, yeah. Girl, I don't like subtitles. I'm sure you could. You can read. You can read. I trust can. Me. This is why. Girl. No, I'm going to tell you. You're going to get multitask. so engrossed. That's the problem. You know, don't break out the vibrator when you're doing it. Just watch the fucking television. <laughs> so no, it's worth it. I'm sure maybe there's a dub like oh, option. Okay. Like I don't know, I don't know, but I reading subtitles is quite. It doesn't bother for me. you. It doesn't. You but and my the, husband are on that same playing field. He can read them all day, and I'm like, honey, I don't want to watch anything with a subtitle. Oh, okay. I'm thinking because the relationships are so real that you will be like, uh, uh. Okay. I'm telling you, it was that. It was, I'm pretty picky. It was really that good. Anyway, so I introduced my mother to it. She called me the other day. She's like, I just spent three hours watching that show. What did you get me into? I was like, see? Because I think it is the reality of relationships. Yes. There's the boring everyday shit, right? That is in a family unit you have and you're taking care of your kids and this and that. And then there is your own dreams and desires. And then there's family's dreams. Like in and the dance between them all. I want to get away from the word balance. I've been telling people this a lot lately. I don't think life is about balance. It's a dance. Right? I agree. Like, what dance are we doing right now? Because balance makes you feel like at some point it'll be 50-50. And it's it never, never is. No. Relationships are never 50-50. Work home life balance is never 50-50. You know, you have a good hair day, but you might not have a good makeup day. It's never 50-50. It doesn't I agree, work that Holly. way. Holly. It never is. So, it could be 75-25. And who mm -hmm. knows how long that 75-25 is going to last. And then the truth is that you then you have to have those hard conversations and you need the energy mm -hmm. to articulate them. And I want to make sure everyone knows that those are hard conversations. They are awkward. But if unless you say what's going on, your partner is not a mind reader. And I'm going to let you all know I can intuitively know what's going on with people. 
but you still need to have articulated conversations with your partner and it's okay if they get heated and it's okay if your feelings get hurt. That's how you have to work through it. Exactly. Exactly. Now, as an intuitive healer, where Mm -hmm. can people find you? I am online at hollyhughesintuitive.com. I am mostly active on Instagram at Holly Intuitive. (laughs) Holly Hughes Intuitive with underscores, but it'll (laughs) all be there. And um, my book is out and that's on available on Amazon. And it's you have to use my middle name because there are other Holly Hugheses. So it's Holly they Rachel Hughes. I can see the book behind I'm gonna, you. I'm going to say it. it's called Real Not Perfect, How to Become Your Happy Authentic Self. It's free on Kindle Unlimited. And it is an ebook and paperback as well. And it is a process. The book is a process of defining you to be who you are, defined by your own words and your own choosing and how to protect that real authentic version of you and that I know that it's scary, but it's such a freedom and it's, it feels so much better not have to worry about who you are in front of other people because you get to own your own identity. Wonderful. Thank you, Holly. The big takeaway I want you listeners to take from this today, one thing Holly said is you always need to understand the underlying reason of why you just want a slice. I like how she said that because everyone is worthy of the whole motherfucking cake. Why do you just want a slice of the cake. You may not want to admit it to yourself, but there is some brokenness at some point in your life while you're just satisfying yourself with a slice. I don't care how successful you are, how much uh, you know money you have coming in or don't have coming in. There is always an underlying reason of why you're accepting a slice. So as we end today's episode, again, Holly, an amazing discussion we had today for our listeners. And, you know, that's the one takeaway. Holly and I want you to take. Don't accept slices, guys. Whole pieces of cake. Whole pieces of cake. So have a great day. And as I always end, love yourself, voice yourself, and be yourself. Till the next podcast, guys. Thanks for tuning in to Fampale Podcast. If you want to continue the conversation or share your takeaways, I want to hear from you. Head on over to the website or join our Facebook community and comment your favorite part of the show or share your thoughts. I want to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to rate and subscribe to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Chat with you next week.